Hello, and welcome to the 30s podcast. How are you doing today, Clint? I'm pretty good. How are you, Marcus? I'm doing good. I'm doing good today. I'm pretty amped. <laughs> pretty, pretty fired up. Um, I can tell. Yeah, can tell? <laughs> Just want Woo! to, um, I'll spring up your appearance today. Yeah. So, yeah. I'm noticing the the middle stash. Oh yeah. Oh. Uh, the yep. aviators. Mm-hmm. And uh, the shirt is kind of. I, I'll say it's 80s ish. Yeah. Pattern. I, yeah. Short sleeve shirt that's not buttoned up. Yeah. Kind of I. It was the key was to not have it buttoned up because someone certain had it unbuttoned up last <laughs> night in the movie and I, I'm just like I want that look. Good <laughs> God. <laughs> Woo. Okay. Uh, what did you watch last night? Because I watched Top Gun Maverick <laughs> last night, <laughs> okay. and it was so good. I'm not, like, the hugest Top Gun fan. Okay, neither am I. And I'm like, okay, Danger Zone, cool. Yeah, I know I'm, I know it more through memes. I've seen Top Gun yeah. as a kid. Yeah. I think the last time I watched it, I was probably 9 or 10. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I've seen it. I, I remember the movie for the most part. Yeah, and I, you know, the memes are always great, but you do have, you look kind of like Goose. Oh, <laughs> yes, because in this movie, because because Deuce Deuce Goose dies <laughs> in the first one, he leaves behind his son. Okay. So his son, did he have played, a son in the first one? Yeah, he was like a five year old. Okay, like All a right. toddler kid. That I don't remember. Yeah. Okay. And well, this one is very heavy on the flashbacks, very heavy oh. on the use of Danger Zone. So when that really? theme comes on, it's like bam, 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 bam. is it like, the same oh God, the same I'm version back. from the eighties? The same song, the same exact one. It's not like no one the did a weekend cover. sings it. Or yeah, something. not the weekend. Or Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga wrote a song for it at the end, but okay. that was that was at the end. I was I was kind of glad because yeah. whew, once that music starts, you're just like, oh, I want a motorcycle. I want just to be shredded <laughs> and in the air. You don't want to play volleyball. Well, in this one, <laughs> they play, they play two-way football at the beach. Okay, so <laughs> to practice offense and defense at the same time. So they still do a homoerotic scene in this one. Yeah. Oh God. So I mean, that's yeah. kind of like a big deal in the first one. So I yeah. Get it. Okay. That was to get the ladies in there. It looks like it was more to get the dudes in there. Keep <laughs> in the dudes the first in the one. seats. <laughs> Look at those guys and those bodies. <laughs> Jesus. Okay. So how was yeah. the, how was the movie then? Overall. So over it was actually a really good movie. I think it was really good because the, the flying in the, the planes mm. was done really well. I'm always like, was Tom Cruise like flying? Was he really the pilot? No, he wasn't. I'm sure he was <laughs> in like the back if he was in it at all. Like okay. in the back seat and there was some pilot who's just like shut up back there. Yeah. Shut up. Because you I'm sure he's like on the radio trying to act the whole time. Yeah. I don't think that you could actually have someone in there acting. I don't think that's during, okay. Yeah, but when I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, <laughs> could I do that? Yeah. I could be Tom Cruise. Okay. But so, I mean, I don't know if I want to go to space yet. But No. Do they go to space? He is pr- I mean, he's pretty high at the beginning. He's trying to get to Mach 10. Okay. Oh, <laughs> that's not enough. He has to keep going. <laughs> And yeah. then, so because then I looked at my face and I was like, "Okay, I'll try the. It's the goose stash, but it's the yeah. rooster stash now. Okay, rooster, the cock stash. Yeah, cock. So <laughs> this is the peacock, the peacock stash. Okay, I'll be the I'll be peacock. Okay, whoo! I can start calling you peacock if you want. Peacock, maybe, maybe. <laughs> especially if we're sponsored by Peacock. No. Where you find <laughs> TV shows like ding, The Office, ding, Parks ding. and Rec. <laughs> Uh, it won't happen for a while if that's going to happen. But it's also because school ended yesterday. Okay. So I was like, oh, I don't have to look a certain way mm-hmm. right now. They didn't let you grow your stash? Well, I could have, but I don't want to be like a elementary school teacher with a yeah. mustache. Could be kind of creepy. Like just a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I'd rather do it knowing that I'm leaving to another state where I'm not going to see people that I know. Yeah. It looks good, though. Oh, thank you. Welcome. What was what was your your week like this week? Um, it was fine. I I had just like mundane shit that I had to take care of. 
um, throughout the house. Um, yeah, it was pretty boring. I did I did some writing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I didn't I didn't have a lot going on this week actually. Um, it's been a very boring week. Oh my! <laughs> <laughs> next week will be eventful, but because um, I'm finally gonna go back to work next week. Oh yeah, because you've still haven't been back to work. No, it's been three weeks. Dang. Well, it will be three weeks when I go back on Sunday, mm-hmm. and yeah, yeah, nothing much happened. But we did go to comedy show. Yeah, last week on Saturday. Yeah, saw Christina P. Oh, that was a lot of fun. She's cool. Yeah, she was cool. She's good. Out in Irvine. Yeah, Irvine. Irvine so improv. It's an interesting crowd. Yeah. Uh, not not a bad crowd, but just you know, very of the area. Yeah, because how did how did you put it? You you described it as oh, this is like half of it is our friend, who's a blonde woman who lives in uh where does she live? Well, in the OC. Yeah, I didn't. I don't remember how I put it, but I I do sometimes when you want to describe people and you're like you know like that um that you just have to say like that OC mom. Yeah, and they immediately know, like, okay, I know what you mean. Um, there's a lot of those in there, or even for like dudes as well. I was like, you know, that OC dude in the hat, like, got it, I got know it. exactly there what you is. mean. Yeah, um, so that was mostly that crowd. There was a few inconsistencies here mm-hmm. and there, but mostly that was fine. And even, even came out in some of the comedians' jokes, or like they made a COVID joke. Oh, well, I think all three of them made COVID jokes, yeah, like, oh, well, you're in Irvine, so. <laughs> it doesn't doesn't, doesn't yeah it doesn't exist yeah. out here and it's like yeah that's true <laughs> yeah. Irvine Impro- Ir- Irvine Spectrum is where I went when I was like uh I'm dating someone and I want to like go on a date but you couldn't do anything yeah except in Irvine yeah in Orange County in general cheesecake like, factory or something you know you could do stuff there and the whole time I was like one day things will be open <laughs> and it didn't work out. <laughs> But now I have you to go to stuff with. <laughs> so it all worked out. Oh, I guess. It all works out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, parts of it work out, I guess. Parts, yeah, parts. Not all the parts. No, no. But it was it was a fun show. Um, I've been wanting to see her do stand up for a very long time. I think I told you like she's probably my definitely top three for comedic influences. I don't know if you got that from seeing her that mm-hmm. night, but. Um, yeah, it was great. And then her feature act, who they don't do feature acts anymore, but they still call her a feature act, Chase O'Donnell. Yeah. That was your first time hearing about her. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've listened to her before, and she's pretty funny. And then the guy that was emceeing, I don't know who that was, and I don't remember his name. Um, yeah, he just yeah. seemed like a he was okay. an L.A. dad. Yeah, he was all right. He had a few yeah. good ones, but um, but yeah, it was a good show. Mm-hmm. What a good time. I got very drunk. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that when you get a booth, you get the two hundred dollar credit. I okay, so I knew that that was a thing, but I didn't know that you had like you have to use it all. And I we actually we didn't have to use it all because we didn't get charged or anything in the end. Yeah. But the last time that I bought a booth, um, which is when we went to the comedy store that one time, it said that same thing about a credit. But none of that was applied to the check. Yeah. And I still paid whatever I paid that night. So I just kind of was like, all right, whatever. I think because the price, the credit, that credit was $200 for the booth. But that was the price of the booth. Yeah. So I was just assuming that that's just what it costs for the booth. I didn't know that that also goes towards uh, food and drinks. Yeah. So, I mean, Yeah. Well, if it if it was like that at the comedy store, they didn't mention that ever. No, so and then they the also first time even if they didn't mention it, it, they didn't even apply it to the check afterwards. Yeah. So I was just like, hey, whatever. I guess that's just the verbiage is weird on when you because yeah. bu- you buy from the same um, ticket vendors. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget what it is, but it's the same. It's the same verbiage. Like it's the same website, same third party website that books it. For the improv and for the comedy store, and same for the Brea improv because when I bought I bought tickets for Chrissy D, it was the same thing. You said you said there's a credit, and I boot the booth costs the same price as this booth. So mm-hmm. we'll see then if we have a two dollar two dollar credit. But yes, we had a two dollar credit in Irvine, and we had already had a couple drinks outside, 
and then her server came up and was like, you guys have $200. And I was <laughs> like, we'll be fine. I was like, you keep going. <laughs> yeah, because you stopped yeah. drinking, right? You, yep, you keep going. <laughs> yeah. I can't, I can't drink the whiskeys. And I kind of, I know. remember the last the week before I came to that conclusion and I still fell for it this time. And I met up with my friend earlier this week. Um, who's, who's older than me. I have a lot of friends that are in their forties now mm-hmm. um, who are like older brother type friends. And they're, um, I, I talked to him about the whiskey thing. And he was like, well, yeah. Cause with, with whiskeys, um, the more you drink, the easier it is to drink them. So once you've had like one or two, the rest just go down like water. Yeah. Holy shit, you're right. Because yeah, uh, I remember I had that first one, and it didn't take long to drink it, but I was just kind of sipping on it. And then I think after two, I was just like sucking them down Mm -hmm. real quick. And then before you know it, you're you're too late. Gone. Gone. Yeah. And it's yeah. I don't know. I can't do that. Yeah. So that's a good '30s topic. What can or can't you drink now? There's nothing that I cannot drink. It's just you either just realize, um, so like that realization there is that, oh, like you, you understand um, what that al- what alcohol does to you more. Because um, I had also brought up to you and then to this, my other buddy was that um, if I'm having a beer or like a glass, glass of champagne or wine, I don't have to keep drinking. I'll have mm-hmm. two or three, and then that's, I'm good. Um, but for whatever reason, it's, it's not just whiskey either. I know, like, um, if I have vodka, too. Yeah. That's really, whiskey and vodka are really the only two spirits that I drink. I'll just keep throwing them back. Because mm-hmm. after, you, once you're already drunk, it's just like water. So you don't taste it or feel it, but it's still hitting you harder, and you're drinking it faster. Yeah. And it's always, like, the next day you're like, yeah dude i should have done that (laughs) yeah like and that's that's what i mean like like yeah yeah there's probably like oh like alcohol is gonna affect you it affects everybody differently because we all have different body types or tolerance or whatever you ate that day Mm -hmm. however hydrated you were and i because i'm just at the point where i thought i couldn't drink a lot and then the other night i i went out with um these uh these newer friends from my my teaching class from my masters in Laverne and those lady those girls those women in their <laughs> late 20s early 20s they kept going <laughs> and i was like oh. all right another tall one <laughs> yeah here we go like i was glad i didn't have whiskey i had like blue moons okay so i i didn't but i didn't expect five or Six drinks. Right. That was crazy. That was insane. What are these women doing? They're teaching, so I guess. It sucks, too. Drink. Like, if you're having a good time, um, that also contributes. You're like, oh, I'm having a good time. Let's just keep going. Yeah. And um, it's it's hard sometimes to to weigh that. Like, you know what? No, I'm going to stop. Like, cause I, I remember on the way out, I we stopped at Dave & Buster's, and... The next day, because I, I remember I asked you, like, you want another drink? And you're like, yeah. I was like, he should have just said no. <laughs> you saw how drunk I was? Because I, I, in that moment, if you had said no, I'd have been like, okay, let's oh, go. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> but not that I'm blaming you for that, but I'm just thinking, like, mm-hmm. you know, if I was with somebody and they were that drunk, I would have just said no. And we could just go home and it would have been fine. Um, again, I don't blame you for anything. Yeah. That's all. I'm in control of myself or my actions are my own. But. Um, I think that I think that was the one that got me because I remember I don't remember after that really. Oh yeah. Um, I remember being in the car for a little bit. I mean, I had my arm on you at one point. <laughs> it's like Chase O'Donnell, <laughs> you gotta follow Chase O'Donnell. I don't something yeah, about Chase yeah. O'Donnell, you and then through, I saw that I texted yeah. you her and Doctor Drew, and I was yeah. like, why did I bring that one up? <laughs> of all Chase O'Donnell shit, I brought the Doctor Drew one up, and um, yeah, you're like, you're not following her, <laughs> you're not following Andrew Santino. And Bobby Lee, you had to follow all these people. You followed like twenty comedians in like five seconds. I did, or you did? You did it on my phone. Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "All right, okay." Well, yeah, done. I don't remember that. 
But I think there was a Dave and Buster's rink that just was like, that's the yeah, one that got you. I mean, I'm not good at saying no, but like, I was like, right. we still hang out. I had yeah. a Sprite. I know you did. I remember that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you were talking, you were talking, talking about Sprite. Because of course, yeah. so I'm always like, should I drink today? Should I not drink? What's the deal with drinking? And you're like, well, you know what? Sprites <laughs> have tasted really good lately. <laughs> And I'm like, oh, yeah, Sprite? <laughs> it's that easy. Yeah, to say no <laughs> to alcohol. And the sprite was probably to good, right? Yes, the sprite. Yeah, it was right. good. It's it's good. It's good. Sprite. <laughs> sprite. Okay, so sprite is underrated. Okay. Um, preface: I don't drink sodas unless it's in my uh, alcohol. I have like a splash of my alcohol. And like last week, I craved a soda and I ordered a sprite. And it was like the greatest thing ever. Wow. <laughs> it, yeah. It was very refreshing. I sucked it down real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Yeah. Real and quick afterwards sick. I was like, that was that was it. That hit the spot. I had a little bit of sugar, no caffeine. And oh, good. yeah, it was great. And then I think I talked it up to you. How was your day? I had a sprite. Like, <laughs> yeah, that was your highlight. That was my highlight of the day. It was, like I had, it was a, so had a fucking crazy. sprite. That was the <laughs> highlight of my day. And they mm. talked about, like, too, you can squeeze lemon and limes in them, and yeah. that really gets you going. <laughs> yeah, the lemon and lime, I I was honestly like, yeah, that's a game changer. <laughs> yeah. That's a big deal. Um, I'm talking about Sprite. Anyway, <laughs> so back to yeah. uh, the other night. Yeah, I think if I didn't have that last one, I would have I yeah. been fine. But um, I don't really, like, I think I always think about it the next day, and I always like, think about, like, Fuck, like I shouldn't have done that. Um, I shouldn't have done that. Mm-hmm. Um, because I lost my watch. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it had to have fallen off in your car somewhere because I would have. I think I was. I always know when it's not there, and um, I woke up the next day. Oh, here's the thing. That's why I was. I has to be in your car or has to be, like under my bed or something. Is because every time, every night before I go to sleep, I have a routine where I put, like, my keys in a certain spot and my wall in a certain spot. They're they're in different spots. And then, like, I was wearing a hat, so I had all my hats, and like, stacked up in a, a specific way. Yeah. And I always take my clothes off. and I don't throw my clothes on the floor ever. I always put them in the, the hamper. I don't like having clothes laying around. Yeah. And when I woke up the next day, everything was in its spot. My phone was on the charger, oh. too, and it's one of those, um, like, standing chargers, yeah. so I have to, like, put it there. Everything was on its spot. Everything was where it was supposed to be, but except for my watch. My watch also goes on the charger. Uh, it's Apple Watch, oh. so it also goes right next to the phone, and it charges at night. And I've like it's part of routine. And um, yeah, I woke up and I was like, "What the fuck is like?" I tore my bed apart. That maybe I fell asleep with it on, and because it'll come off if I'm like moving around and stuff. The little um, the little handle will un- unhook. It wasn't in my bed. Like, fuck, it has to be in your car. Because I would have noticed if it was gone. Yeah. And I, don't, I guess you couldn't find it. But I think I would have known if it fell off anywhere else. I get, I'm not good at finding things. Okay, well, we can look after I'm a this. bad seeker. I cannot. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what you it is. You couldn't play on I've the Quidditch never, team as a seeker? No, I couldn't. I'd be a bludger. <laughs> I'd just be beating the shit out of that big, big ball. A beta. The beta. I'll be a beta. I'll be a beta. A beta. Still a beta. Always a beta. Oh, I, was be- <laughs> I was beating before we came over here. Yeah, oh, Jesus. <laughs> that's why I was oh late. Oh, my God. That's why you was late. <laughs> that and because well, I was watching uh, Stranger Things. Yeah, well, I was watching <laughs> Top Gun, so you better. Never mind. <laughs> Speaking of beating off. Speaking of beating. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Other than that, it was a fun night. I. I messaged Chase O'Donnell and Christina P, mm-hmm. and they both um, – well, Chase O'Donnell, I, the next day I comment because she posted a um, a little clip of her, yeah. like the first 20 seconds of her going on stage. And I was just like, oh, great show last night. And she liked it. Oh. Yeah. And then uh, Christina P, I think I was – you. Yeah. I told you? Okay, I DM'd her my creative show tonight. Mm-hmm. And she liked it. Like, oh fuck, she saw it. There you go. Yeah, and I, I had this conver I had this conversation with you, but I, when I was talking to my friend the friend the other night who's an artist, a creative as well, I was like, Yeah, when you reach out to um other artists or other people that create content, 
um, and just say like, hey, good job. And I've, n- I've noticed that most of them will acknowledge that you spoke to them. Yeah. Either they'll look at it, which um, if you know how this is strictly Instagram, on Instagram, you have to approve seeing it because if, if they don't, if you don't follow each other, it comes in as like, oh, so and so wants to send you a message. Yeah. So you have to look at it. <coughs> so they that takes some action. Yeah. So they'll like it, look at it, respond to it sometimes, and um, I think that's really cool. If you, you know, the people, artists, and creatives that you like, and you want to just tell them like, hey, that was cool. Um. It's cool to respond back. And I was telling my friend about it who is also, he's an artist and he does, um, he does murals and um, street art, painting, uh, just a lot of stuff. Mm. But um, that's how he's gotten jobs before. Right. It's because he's very responded from his, um, his art social media, like his, that's how he gets booked and stuff. Mm-hmm. And he'll follow other artists and creatives and just be like, hey, that's really cool. And then they'll click on that. They'll see that like his picture is a picture of one of his paintings or sketches or whatever. And then they'll see what he has. And then they'll he's been booked before that way by people. It's like, wow. That's really cool. It's just um it's it's a form of networking. Yeah. But just kind of reaching out to people and just saying, like, hey, good job can lead to all kinds of things. That's cool. And I was just letting taking note of him that i've done that before with um you know like clothing brands i've done it before other verified accounts um other like celebrities i've done it before too some actors and stuff never respond to anything but when it's from uh creatives like artists stand up um people on twitch anything 90 percent of the time they respond to it in some way and i just think i think that's cool yeah because they're also fellow art like creatives which right. is something that I aspire to be. Um, but who knows? Like one day I could message somebody and they can look at like, oh, look, at that's a weird picture mm-hmm. that this person's got and then see whatever you're doing and be like, oh, cool. Cause I, I've also, I've made friends online that way. Yeah. Yeah, uh, me too. Yeah. With other yeah. Uh, artists and creatives that are just, that I, I'm not mostly just like a friendship, not even, not like a, cre- like a creative friendship. Um, just being like, hey, your work's cool, and then you end up talking to each other, yeah. and like you become internet friends almost. Some yeah. that I've met in real life um, since becoming internet friends, but yeah, it's cool to just reach out when you can because you never know like what's gonna come from that, and it's cool that um, the the people that you um, really respect or aspire to be or who are influences, they may not, they don't, obviously don't know that. Yeah. Um, but they are that to me. And then I just respond and like, I feel so good. In that yeah. moment when they just, when they essentially you smile at somebody and they smile back. Mm-hmm. That's what it yeah, comes. That's basically that what it is. Equivalent. Yeah. 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 And people like it. Like whenever, cause if I, if I am at a comedy show or if I was, if I saw someone that I am a fan of and I know their work, I I just say, hey, you're doing a great job, because I think universally everybody would love to hear that. Yeah. No matter what they're doing, whatever job it is, and especially creative people, because they're probably thinking about it all the time. Cause right. they, it's their their job, which would be great if it was our job. But then if it's our job, it's like there's so much at stake too. Mm-hmm. And a lot of times, like in the past, people wouldn't know if other people liked it unless you like bought it or unless you did tell them on the street. So it's cool to use like Instagram that way. I think that's like the best way to try to use it is to talk to people and to, to encourage people. That'd be great. It's probably the healthiest way to use Instagram. Cause I've gone, especially the last couple of years with the way the world is and the way people have changed. Mm-hmm. Um, I have definitely blocked a lot of not just people, but unfollowed a lot of um, things I just don't want to, I don't care to see anymore on yeah. my feeds. Um, all kinds of things, not even, not even people that I know, even though I have blocked some of them. Um, but it's just, it's nice to kind of call your, uh, your feeds so you only see what you want to see. Yeah. That way, that way it's never, you never get anything negative out of social media. You, some things will slip through here and there, but, um, 
that's a, a whole thing with the argument on social media or people who are like, oh, it's bad for you and whatever. And it's like, yeah, I guess it can be, but you have control over that mm-hmm. about what you want to see or how much time you want to spend on it. You can set um, alarms on your phone to, to, to time you out if it's been 20 minutes or whatever you want it to be or it will not let you back on for that day. Yeah. So, I don't know. I, I love Instagram. That's the, that's the one I'm on the most. Yeah, me too. I I think Facebook is the most toxic for yeah. me because I used to use it for work. Mm-hmm. So I had to have friends with everybody and I had to be part of the work page, which whatever job I was at had a work page. And a work page would get toxic because all the work drama would get on there, even though it's meant for like shift trades and like, oh, there's traffic today. Take this street. But it the toxicity would just keep coming on there. So Facebook is so revolting to me now. I I can't even look at that. Mm-hmm. But Instagram is that thing that, that I want to keep refining to where it's like I want it to just show me this stuff that I, I'll be encouraged by and feel good about. But then stuff happens too where it's like, ugh, I can't be on anything today. If I am on something, I have to like somehow make this – more positive or make this better. Yeah. And that's a struggle too. Yeah. It can be, yeah, definitely have to know when to unplug. Yeah. If you noticed some of that stuff happening, just tap out. Um, yeah, like for me, my feeds are pretty positive or like a lot of jokes, a lot of memes. I love, yeah. I love memes. You got to keep it up. Keep up the memes. Yeah. Memes are memes are one of those types of comedy that are just, they're so elevated because ha- you have to get it right away. Mm-hmm. It has to be, you just have to look at it and know what it is. It has to be a few seconds. And yeah, there's people that are so clever with memes. Yeah. And I like how quick they are usually. And it's usually a movie reference mm-hmm. or a TV show reference. Like right now, there's a whole bunch for Kenobi. Okay. Because that came out last night. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure tonight there'll be a bunch of Stranger Things. Yeah, going. Stranger that Things came and, out yeah. today. And Top Gun. And so there's going to be already I was just like, damn, they were quick. Because like I thought of that, too. Yeah. I was like, why did that character do this? Yeah. And I'm like, well, thanks, Twitter. <laughs> I, my Twitter is just basically Star Wars Twitter. Yeah. Because it's going to tell me all the stuff that I agree with and disagree with. Mm-hmm. That's that's what's good about Twitter though is that it tracks what you like and don't like, so it'll just keep throwing you that shit that yeah. you like. It's like, oh, I noticed that you liked um, uh, some kind of anime reference, and it'll yeah. be because you like this, and then it'll be something that regards to that. And you're like, oh, that's pretty funny too. I'll give that a like. It's like a happier rabbit hole. Yeah, yeah. One that I'm like, I can't feel bad for this now. <laughs> this was my own bidding. Yeah. But Instagram will have like an ad for hair pills and shoes and pants and shirts and yeah, I'll get stuck in that. <laughs> it, I did Insecurity. get a creepy one yesterday. I was listening to a podcast and they brought up uh, Melissa Villasenor. Oh, I love her. And yeah, she's great. She's yeah, funny. One of my faves. Um, but I don't follow her on anything. And while I was listening to this podcast, I opened up Twitter. And the very first thing that popped up was Melissa V. Senor. Ooh. I was like, oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> They're listening to me. Listen to this. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. That stuff, that's too much. Yeah. And it's you, you always think, too, like, there's no way they're listening in, like, through a speaker or anything. And then it happens. <laughs> stuff like that happens in the moment. And you're like, whoa. Yeah. They are listening. Dang. A lot of times I'm like, ooh, if... Someone I was dating was that good? <laughs> listen to what you want. <laughs> Actually listen to what I want? How different would my life have been? Huh. It'd be different. It'd be way different. <laughs> oh <my> <laughs> Don't fall down wow. that rabbit hole. Yeah, How would it be different? What if? There could be so what many differences. If? So many what ifs. Okay, so I want to do this thing with you. Okay. Um, unless you want to keep asking me questions. Well, we could we could do... Dude, this is going to take like 15 minutes, okay. 10 minutes, maybe. Yeah. Should we do, do this? It. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so I've been hearing a lot lately about people being narcissists. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I, I heard this from Dr. Drew as well, that 
it's a very overused term hmm. and being a narcissist as what everyone thinks it might be is not true yeah some people just have anxiety or whatever there's all kinds of reasons so i found this test okay. and i thought it could be <laughs> interesting to see where you lie on this okay um because just curious because i don't think you're a narcissist at all oh thank you <laughs> I, I don't know well it's it's a weird thing where it's like oh it's always had like a like a taboo or like a negative spin yeah and i don't think being a narcissist is a bad thing yeah um because i know a little bit about actual narcissism and it's not necessarily bad it's just a certain way of thinking yeah and i thought i could ask you these questions okay um <laughs> Hopefully this isn't too boring. Here we go. <laughs> if it gets boring, Narciss we can stop. The narcissist test? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel like it'll be interesting. Yeah. Okay, which statement? Matt, wait a minute. 40 statements. Ooh. This might be a little too long. We can do like a fire round. Or you do them really quick? Uh, Sure. Which statement best matches you? I have a natural talent for influencing people. I am not good at influencing people. I think I influence people. Okay, which statement? All right, we'll do it again. Best matches you. Modesty doesn't become me. I am essentially a modest person. I don't think I'm that modest. Okay. I would do almost anything on a dare. I tend to be a, a fairly cautious person. I'll do dares. Okay. When people compliment me, I sometimes get embarrassed. I know I'm good because everyone tells me, keeps telling me so. Um, I'd say the second one, just because I do like knowing that I'm doing the right thing. Okay. Um, the thought of ruling, <laughs> thought of ruling the world frightens the hell out of me. If I ruled the world, it'd be a better place. I know my answer for that. Uh, I think, this I think that quick. scares me. I'll say it scares quick. me. Okay. I can usually talk my way out of anything. I try to accept the consequences of my behavior. I think I could talk my way out of it. I agree. <laughs> I prefer to blend in with the crowd or I like to be the center of attention. I do like attention. Yes, you do. I will be a success or I am too concerned about success. I will be a success. Okay. I am no better or worse than most people. I think I am a special person. Uh, that's tough. Like I'll say special. Okay. Cause I would say the same thing. Kind I think of I'm special. It's a diff I definitely a type I'll of elevate special. myself other other pe yeah. over other people. I know I'm unique. Yeah. So I know I'm not yeah. a normie. I'm not the norm. Yeah. Um, I am not sure if I make a good leader. I see myself as a good leader. Definitely good leader now okay. after having to teach and stuff. Okay. I am assertive or I wish I were more assertive. I'm usually the one having to be assertive. So I'd say that, yeah. Um, I like to have authority over other people or I don't mind following orders. I mean, I don't mind following orders. Let's not, okay. let's not do gray yeah. areas. Let's do yeah. black and whites. Yeah. I find it easy to manipulate people or I don't like it when I find myself manipulating people. I think I find it easy. Okay. It I'm can happen pretty easily. Thinking about these answers to this, what I would put, I think I'm a narcissist. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm getting the yes, the yes yeah. side. Pretty hard yes side. Uh, I insist upon getting the respect that is due me or I... do me. <laughs> oh. <laughs> or I usually get the respect that I deserve. I think I want the respect. Is that the demand? The first one? The first one is I insist upon getting the respect that is due me. That is due to me? Is this a, it, I would it word it as I insist upon getting the respect that I am due. Or I usually get the respect I deserve. I think... I mean, usually, I'll say usually, usually the respect I deserve. Yeah. I don't particularly like to show off my body or I like to show off my body. I do like to show off my body. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> Great. Okay. Um, I can read people like a book or people are sometimes hard to understand. I, I study people so I could, I could read them. If I feel competent, I am willing to take responsibility for making decisions or I like to make I like to take responsibility for making decisions. I I take responsibility. Okay. I just want to be a I just want to be reasonably happy or I want to amount to something in the eyes of the world. Ooh. That's an interesting question. Huh. I want to be reasonably happy or I want to amount to something in the eyes of the world. Eyes of the world. Those seem very different. 
I don't know, because I want to be the most happy, so I don't know if I could pick the first one. I think I'll have to pick the second one. Okay. Um, my body is nothing special, or I like to look at my body. I do like to look at it. Okay. I try not to be a show-off, or I will usually show off if I get the chance. I'll probably show off if I get the chance. Okay. I always know what I'm doing, or sometimes I'm not sure of what I'm doing. Sometimes I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. I sometimes depend on people to get things done, or I rarely depend on anyone else to get things done. I'd say since the 20s, I would probably have to say like I do more of it on my own now. It's okay. probably the second one. Sometimes I tell good stories, or everyone, everybody likes to hear my stories. I mean, I want to say everyone likes to hear my stories. That's what we're going to go with. Yeah. <laughs> I expect a great deal from other people, or I like to do things for other people. I like to do other things for other people. Okay. I will never be satisfied until I get all that I deserve, or I take my satisfactions as they come. Oh, I take it as it comes. <laughs> <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> Compliments embarrass me, or I like to be complimented. I like it. I think I like it. I have a strong will to power, or power for its own sake doesn't interest me. I mean, I do like power. I like, I like power, yeah. I don't care about new fads and fashions, or I like to start new fads and fashions. I like to start because I like to be on the know. Like, I have to watch it the day it comes out. Okay. I have to, like, because it's like the wannabe Tonight Show host in me so that I can then talk about it with people. Okay. I like to look at myself in the mirror, or I'm not particularly interested in looking at myself in the mirror. I judge myself all the time, <laughs> so mirror. I, can, I can feel like I can answer most of these for you. Yeah. I really <laughs> like to be the center of attention, or it makes me uncomfortable to be the center of attention. It does not make Obviously, me Obviously, if we're doing this, this podcast, we're doing the video. Comedy, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can live my life in any way I want to, or people can always, can, people can't, cannot always live. People can't always live their lives in terms of what they want. I think people can't always live yeah, I agree the way that. they want. Uh, being, an th being an authority doesn't mean that much to me. People always seem to recognize my authority. I'd say the second one because people, they come to me. I would prefer to be a leader or it makes little difference to me whether I'm a leader or not. Um. I'd say I'd prefer because I don't want to do stuff I don't want to do anymore. Redundant. Okay. <laughs> I don't think that's what it's asking. Well, but okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like. But no, no, no. That's fine. We're gonna, we're I'm just put listening that. to somebody. You know, like like I'm just following. Oh, I guess we're going to this stupid place again. Yeah, I'd like things to be put in my hands as yeah. well, if that's what it means. Yeah. But anyway, I'm going to be a great person. I hope. I hope I'm going to be successful. These are both different. Uh. What was the first one? I hope to be a great person or I, I am? I'm going to be a great person or I hope I'm going to be successful. I mean, I think I want to be successful. Yeah, I'd rather have that I'm too. Great. I don't care if I'm good or not. As yeah. Well. Success. As long as I'm the dictator, then they can call me the great. <laughs> Back to the leader question. Yeah, le I want to be in charge and successful. I don't care. Success, please. <laughs> um, people sometimes believe what I tell them or I can make anybody believe anything I want them to. I'm pretty good at making people believe. Okay. I am a born leader, or leadership is a quality that takes a long time to develop. I'll say the first one, because okay. I was the oldest. I wish somebody would someday write my biography, or I don't like people to pry into my life for any reason. Um, I'd rather be in control of my biography. So rather write it. So second one. I get upset when people don't notice how I look when I go out in public. I don't mind blending into the crowd when I go out in public. I would like them to see how I look. Yeah, I'm like kind of in the middle of that. It depends on yeah. depends on where in public. Yeah, where I'm at, who I'm with. Yeah. Sometimes I'm like, I don't want to talk to people here. No. Yeah. Um, I am more capable than other people. There is a lot I can learn from other people. Mm. I'll say. There's a lot I could learn. Okay, so this is the last one. Oh, God. I am much like everybody else, or I am an extraordinary person. I am extraordinary. Okay. <laughs> Get results. 
Good Lord. <laughs> okay. What is it? Um, what does it say? It starts off with... That was the whole... It breaks it all down. Oh, okay. Results of your narcissistic personality quiz. Between 12 and 15 is that... First of all... Hold on. Between... T- oh, hold on. Between 12 and 15 is average. Where's your number at? It doesn't say your number. At the bottom. Between 12 and 15 is average. Celebrities often score closer to 18. Narcissists score over 20 because you scored 18 or higher. (laughs) You may want to check out the symptoms of narcissistic personality disorder. Oh, my God. Below, you will find a brief interpretation of each seven, blah, 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 blah. So eight, 16 to 18 is moderate narcissism. That's um, the t- 20 plus is your total. You're running right above that. I'm at 20 plus? No, no, you're right below that because you got oh. eight, 18. Oh, 18, okay. And, t- and towards narcissism. <laughs> okay, so scoring for authority is a seven. That means you score particularly high in authority, suggesting you see yourself as a leader or someone who values power. Uh, scoring for superiority. You scored particularly high in superiority, suggesting you feel you are superior to most others. Um, Exhibitionism. You score particularly high in exhibitionism, Hmm. suggesting you have a higher need than most to be the center of attention in any group or gathering. And exploitativeness. You score particularly high in exploitativeness, (laughs) suggesting you don't mind exploiting others in order to meet your own needs or gain. Dear God, it sounds so bad. But usually it's, it's like... It's not, this isn't a, like it's just an observation. It's not okay. good or bad. And then scoring for vanity, you score particularly high in vanity, mm-hmm. suggesting you have a strong belief in your own abilities and attractiveness. So according to this, you're a narcissist. <laughs> 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 but you, you're you in the same Thanks. score as celebrities. It's yeah. moderate narcissism, but you're not a total narcissist. Yeah, well, it's, it's that, that level of like, I know I can do something. It's one of those things where... There's a, a line between narcissism and confidence, yeah, I think. Yeah. To where that's why I'm, I said before, like, narcissism isn't ne- necessarily bad. Like, it, it has a bad uh, connotation to it because I think it's misunderstood. Yeah. Um, which is why I want to do this test. <laughs> but I don't know. It's not bad. It could be you're just, according to this, you're just confident because uh, mm-hmm. all the scoring is just, those are all good things for the most part like saying yeah. you're, you feel you're a leader and you value power and you're superior to most others higher need to be center of attention that could be bad that's that could go wrong but i i think that'd be bad if i was a extrovert yeah because that would be the hey you uh, should see me do this everywhere but there's a lot of times where i'm like yeah i'd like people to see me here right but i'm not gonna like go out of my way to talk to someone just gonna sit in this spot. I'm not gonna take this test right now. <laughs> That'd probably be boring. But I yeah. probably could score similar to yours, or probably even higher on the narcissism scale. Maybe based on some of these questions, because the que- I feel like the questions are very. I don't know. Some of them didn't really. The this or that mm-hmm. they didn't really match together. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Whatever. So you're a narcissist. Here we go. <laughs> You're right here first, guys. Write that on my, my <laughs> Instagram bio. My um my very official clinical test here. <laughs> uh written by profes- professionals at Psych Central. Oh, psych not even BuzzFeed? <laughs> oh, not BuzzFeed. Oh, so it's a real one? Oh shoot. <laughs> yeah, it is <laughs> great. This is a, this is a therapy website. Ready to start therapy? <laughs> find a Ready find a start? therapist. Oh. It also asks for my credit card, so <laughs> oh yeah! Don't you, did you pay for this? Oh yeah. my god! <laughs> if I go further, I'm gonna have to pay for it. Oh but no! <sighs> yeah, oh, so you're that's an artist. Fun. Thank you for letting <laughs> letting me find out. Because I mean, that's something. Like yeah, I can see how it could go the wrong way. Yep. How it could be bad, because like if you do want everyone to see you, and then it becomes like a like a, I'm ready for my scene, Mr. Demille. Yeah. Old school. Mildred Pierce were like, oh, you're obsessed with everybody seeing you. Yeah. And this is bad because, like, okay, look. Maybe you suck. <laughs> it, people might not want to see you. But there's, with me, yes. I just feel like, like, throughout my life, I've been either put on the spot 
or with being like the the oldest child. I've always been like thrust into something. So I had to figure it out. So my parents were like, oh, you should try this art class. So I'd have to go into the art class and figure it out because I had no one else to tell me how to do it. Or they threw me into soccer or baseball or water polo. Water polo was one where it was like, oh, I do not like this. <laughs> you will not bring me back here. Yeah. I cannot swim this whole time. Right. Not a fish. <laughs> Can't make me. So I've, I, like, I've had so many times where like I had to do, I had to sort of, I had to also like look into myself and go, okay, even though I don't want to like be the leader on this thing, I kind of have to because I don't think those other people are going to do very well. Right. And they're all asking, well, what do you want to do? I don't know. What do you want to do? It's like, well, I'll figure this out because I just like to do the the most fun thing. And that's also why, like, I I would be okay with the attention because I think, like, oh, I'm usually in on the cool stuff that I like, not like, oh, I'm trying to be cool. It's like, oh, like, this thing actually interests me. And I, I think this should be talked about, like... Like yesterday, seeing Kenobi. Like, yeah, like Star Wars is one of those weird things where, like, it has that weird hype for being, like... For just being Star Wars. Just insane. But I wanted to see it. I wanted to see it that day. And Is it was any glad. good? It was good, yeah. It's just, it's one of those things where, like... Like, oh, yeah, they really bank on this character that everybody already likes. Mm-hmm. So it's not like a... I like too much of a stretch, but like I like doing that. Like I wish I was at Star Wars Celebration. I wasn't there. Oh yeah, that's going on. That was happening today. Yeah, and it's or in yesterday Anaheim. and today. Yeah, yeah. I wish I went to that. Yeah. Damn. But I'm not gonna like cosplay. I mean, I would do it if it's like for a bit. If you're filming me, it was for content. If yeah. it's for content and comedy, I will be the center of attention because I want to make people laugh. Yeah. And that's what it is. Like, that's that's just it. I think that's the same for me, too, unless it's for a reason. I'm usually pretty shy. Or I don't want to be the center of attention. Um, unless there's a reason for it. Yeah. But, I don't know. I think that was cool about this test is because, you know, narcissism is such a subjective thing because it's, yeah. it's not bad or good. It's just... Sometimes it's very positive. You could use narcissism to get what you want. Yeah, yeah. And, and it kind of goes, I just said it before, but it goes into um, confidence. Um, sometimes that you're just that confident of a person that you know, like, hey, I'm a leader, or I can get what I want by manipulating people in good ways. Mm-hmm. You know, you can manipulate people in good ways. Um, but yeah, even like I, I had a conversation with somebody like years ago about um i was reading a i was reading dune mm-hmm. uh, it wasn't my first time reading dune but um i don't know the context of how it went down but the idea of pretension came up and someone i had had the book was known to be kind of more of a difficult book and a lady had asked me it was like don't you feel kind of pretentious because i was reading it at work oh. i was reading this big thick novel at work because i had downtime and um, like, do you feel kind of pretentious reading that at work? <laughs> and she wasn't trying to be like a bitch or anything. But I was like, well, like a little pretension never hurt anybody. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like if somebody, well. somebody, somebody saw it. So let's take her. She saw that I was reading a difficult book and acknowledged that I was reading it. Like that makes me feel good that someone can see that I'm reading like, like a challenging quote, yeah. challenging book at work where. It's like that's not bad that even if, even if that comes o- across as pretentious, who cares? Like yeah, and it's something to where like oh you're just sa- that girl that chick is saying that because deep down there's there's a kind of like oh I probably can't read that book, but he thinks he could read that book. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to try I don't, that book. I don't think she was thinking that, but it was just. The fact that I was at work and I was just sitting by myself off to the side reading yeah. this, you know, thick, because you know what's in it, a thick book. Yeah. And no one else does that at work. 
yeah. that it kind of came across as like, oh, he's one of those. Where it's like, <laughs> yeah, I am one of those. He's so one of those. Yeah, even if it does come across as pretentious, you know, that doesn't hurt anybody. That's that yeah. works out better for me that you think that I'm pretentious because that at least some way you, in my mind, I'm a little bit more elevated than you are that I can read this challenging book in between yeah. every like 15 minutes whenever I have downtime. Yeah, I'll never feel bad for reading books. Recently, someone was like, like they, they were like, oh, you just quoted like three books. I'm like, and, and? Like, yeah, I read, and this, I learned this, and this is what I got from it. Like, sorry that you don't read. I think it's just a problem with people not reading and not wanting to grow. Yeah. And then they look at yeah. you, and they're like, oh, look at you, you're reading. Or it's also cares what i'm doing yeah <laughs> what are you? who cares what i've read get out anything. get out of here i'm just trying to finish this book yeah, <laughs> yeah. or you just you know they could they know things i probably don't know too and it's not good or bad it's just yeah whatever the fuck um so let's actually wrap this up we wrap this one up yeah let's do it. um don't be a narcissist guy <laughs> no, just kidding. kidding narcissism is not bad narcissism is good if you think you're a narcissist use it in positive ways there are positive ways to use your narcissism um go watch top gun go watch top gun in theaters yeah watch it in a theater don't watch it out is it it's not streaming i think they stopped doing that now yeah it's like a 45 day something yeah and you should because when you're in the theater you're like oh, so much you just feel it all it's and all everywhere also too a quick statement, because someone asked me about this the other day. It's okay to watch movies by yourself. Mm -hmm. It's okay to go to the theater by yourself. It, if you have no one to go with, you don't have to go with somebody. If you want to see that movie, just go watch that movie. It's usually cheaper, because yeah. you can go... If I go by myself, I have to go during the day, early, to mm -hmm. where it's you know the matinee price. and It's usually half the price or less. And it's yeah. honestly sometimes it's better to watch it alone because you can take it in, yeah. And then you can just kind of be with your thoughts afterwards about it too, and like on the drive home or on the walk to your car, or whatever, and just really process it without someone else's opinions just yet. It's always nice to discuss it with other people, but um, yeah, go watch movies alone. It's great. Yeah, I like it. Like I, I watched Top Gun by myself. Yeah, and part of it was because I'm not gonna wait. Till I am with my family to see it, because they're gonna see it. Some of them are gonna see it like two or three times by then. Yeah. And then I'm just gonna be the one not enjoying this thing. Yeah. I've had experiences where I'm with like a group of people and the movie ends, and someone just has some like downer comment after I really liked it. Is that I just want to avoid it. No. It was like, <laughs> so I it like, was like boy, watching, that fucking sucked. <laughs> we wa we're I watching like the like the Joker. <laughs> Oh, the Joker okay. movie and someone. Well, that's a whole downer of a movie. Yeah. <laughs> she was like, "That's oh. not shocking that someone had a downer opinion after the Joker." She was like, "Oh, that's such a boy movie." <laughs> I'm like, "Sorry, it's not Little Women." <laughs> what do you want me to do about this? <laughs> Did you say that? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> You're a narcissist. You should have said it in the I moment. Should. I'm a bad narcissist. I need to be a better one. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So we'll see you guys next time. It was see fun. You next time. Um, so until next time, have a good day, everybody. Stay healthy. Stay healthy.